Well, uh, quite simply, Mrs. Birdsall, we, uh... We, uh, we want the very best for Janine. The very best. Uh, I never had the advantages, you see, and... Uh, well, neither of us did. Uh, we saw your school on the television. And there's the uh, documentary on Channel 4. Painted to Dustin rather a rosy light, I think. Yes, and, and Frank turned to me and he said, uh, well, he said, I don't see why our Janine shouldn't go to a school like that. She's she, got brains. She's got brains. Dame Eleanor was considered a progressive in her day, and not only for her views on animal rights. She believed passionately that heathers have an important role to play in society. Sadly, with rising costs, that privilege is somewhat expensive. Oh, uh... We're well aware that sacrifices will have to be made. We've done the sums. <laughs> Holidays will be a thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we almost think you're better off without a car nowadays. <laughs> what exactly is your line of business, Mr Pillsworth? He's with Needlers. Uh, the biscuit people? Oh, I think we sell your custard creams in our tuck shop. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, if you ever have a, a packet that's all uh, broken up, send it back to me. That's what I do. You mend them? No, it, he's with quality control. It's a very responsible job. <laughs> no, uh, the money's not our main concern. What we're wondering is, will Janine fit in? Yes, uh, will she fit in, quite frankly? Our founder believed that pupils should be drawn from the widest possible spectrum. I have pursued this policy rigorously. Last year, we admitted a girl from Wolverhampton. And the fifth form have a girl, I believe, who is the love child of a member of status quo. Oh, Mr. Listen to you. Now don't cry. You'll set your mother off. You won't forget to feed Treacle, will you? Of course we won't. By the time you come home for Christmas, it'll be the fattest hamster in Broxbourne. Aha! The pills works. And uh, this must be Janine. I hope that's not a tear. Heathers, don't cry. There's always a period of adjustment. We find that the first two years are the worst. <laughs> See? It's official. Karen Whitless and Rexic. How did she catch it? You don't catch it, Suki. You sort of develop it to get back at your parents. Well, what'll happen to her? Well, I suppose she'll go into a clinic and then become a model like her sister. This aardvark. Says so, doesn't it? Who are you? Janine Piltworth. Oh, God, they haven't put you in here, have they? I don't want to be here. I didn't want to come to this snotty school. I'd rather be home in my own bed. These are my CDs, and if anyone blags my biscuits, their history. God, she doesn't even speak English. He's not his old self, Treacle. Are you, son? She doesn't sound quite so miserable in this letter, Frank. And there's a note from the matron. They've stopped force-feeding her. Oh, well, that's a step in the right direction. Oh, she's going to be needing guns, apparently. Guns? For the clay pigeon shooting. They recommend somewhere called Purdy's. Well, that'll mean tightening the belt a bit more. No, don't even think of it, Jackie. We just won't eat much. Weekends, obviously. You've been on dirty jobs ever since you got here, haven't you? Victimisation, innit? 
Heathers don't bleed. Do you know who I am? Everybody does. You're the Honourable Camilla Frencham. Your dad's the uh, Duke of King's Cross or something like that. The title's a drag, but it does give one a sort of edge around here. Do you know what slushing is? I think so. It's when younger girls get all moony over older girls. Yes, but if I made you my slush, it would make your life a lot easier. You do it between prep and dozies when everyone's around. You bring me a prezi, an orange or one of those ghastly chocolate biscuits you seem to have an endless supply of. You say, I slush you, and I say, I slush you back. What would I have to do? Oh, just a few faves. Toast the odd bun, that kind of thing. We knew you'd be bushed, so we made your bed and sorted out your bears. Hope they're in the right order. Thanks. Appreciate it. Is she as cool as she looks? Does she wear eyeliner? Is her brother going for half term? Does she have a boyfriend? Heathers don't blab. She's not coming, Frank. Not coming? She's going to stay with a friend in Perthshire. But it's Christmas. Well, she couldn't very well go skiing in Broxbourne, could she? Skiing? Yes. <laughs> That's what she wants for her present. The skis, the suit, the thermal underwear, the moon boots. We could always let her room. I could put an ad in the poly. Yeah, I could probably sell a kidney. And it's not too late to cancel the turkey. Nice to have something Christmas Day, though, isn't it? Help us. We're looking for Janine Pillsworth. Janie Pillsworth? Captain of school? Oh, I expect that'd be the one, yes. Prefix pair well in the senior common room. She can't still be common. OK, next. Hazel Rhoda is out of control. She's been yobbing with the townies and selling acid tabs to the lower school. Gated indefinitely, obviously. Yeah. No treats, no privs, and I think we should shave her head, yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay, last but groan, groan, not least, Parents' Day. Oh. <laughs> Suggestions, please. Thoughts on paper in my buzz box by prep. Any idea who's giving out the prizes? Well, it looks as if we might end up with Geoffrey Archer. Oh. But he is such a noise. I know, he's an utter pleb. No. I've been pushing hard for Emma Thompson, but I think she's going to be in L.A. with Ken. And oh. we've got a few more irons in the fire, but I'm afraid none of them is called Jeremy. We wish. Here we are. Who on earth is that? I think they're probably here about the caretaking job. Tea bell, Lucy. Back in 20. We don't mean to trouble you. We just wanted a word with Janine Pillsworth. It's me. My name is Janie.
What on earth are you doing here? Well, we haven't seen you for the last five years. Yes, yeah, so we couldn't come to Parents' Day because we haven't got anything to wear. You couldn't come anyway. I don't have any parents. You don't? I told them you died years ago. A ski lift broke in Aspen. Oh, is that why you never wrote or brought friends home? Mother, please. How could I possibly bring friends home to that horrid house in Wormsley Road with its pebble dash and its silly little hedge and that ludicrous artificial log fire in the living room as you so pretentiously describe it and the settee with its hand crocheted armrests and your collection of money box cottages and the glass paperweights that snow when you turn them upside down? I mean, really? We've sold the horrid little house. We now live in a horrid caravan. Well, there you are, then. I spend my holes in the homes of friends. Beautiful homes with croquet lawns and orchards. And inside there's the smell of wood smoke and fresh cut flowers. And there's Labradors on the hearth and deer on the walls. In the winter I'm in Swiss chalets. In the summer, Tuscan villas, mellowed with age and surrounded by cypress trees. What are your plans after you leave school? I shall do the season, of course. After that, courtesy of my friend Cordelia's father, I shall be doing Cordon Bleu in Paris. And for my year out, either his boat or his chateau near Limoges. Oh, that's very generous of him. Don't think we could have stretched to that. I am sleeping with him, father. Oh, oh, I see. Well, uh, yeah. So we shan't be seeing much of you in Broxbourne, then. Can't you get it into your heads? You'll never see me. Unless by some grotesque quirk of fate we should happen to pass each other on some distant street, which I doubt, since I can't possibly picture you on the Avenue Foch. But if it should happen, please, and this is the last thing I shall ever ask of you, please give not the slightest flicker of recognition or the remotest hint that I might be from the same gene pool. She despises us, Frank. Oh, obviously. And everything we stand for. Treated us with contempt. Loathing contempt. It's everything we ever dreamed of. <laughs> <laughs>